Welcome to The Ambassador, a prophetic teaching ministry designed to help win the nations and equip the saints. And now, Craig DeMoe with revelation from God's Word. Well, thank you so much for joining me for the Thursday broadcast. And right now, we're talking about the realities of our sonship. Let's go back to the message in progress. This is called Sonship Realities. May the Lord bless you as you listen. Go with me to Galatians chapter 4, and as you're turning, I want to tell you a little story. I, I want to share something with you I've shared for years. I call the parable of two employees. Amen. Let's say that in a thriving company, there was a young man who was hired to do a job, and he did it really well. It was a low-level job, just assembly work, but he always came in early. He stayed late. He treated everybody well. He followed orders, and he gave 120% to the company. His attitude, his habits, his productivity caught the attention of the foreman who recommended him for a promotion. So he was trained in many different jobs until he became the foreman. Because he had the company's best interest at heart, he stayed with the company the rest of his adult life. He wasn't just committed to work. He was committed to the company. In a matter of years, he was running several departments, and he had gained one promotion after another. He ended up making this company a lot of money. And when he finally did retire, he only did so because the owner, the company president, insisted it was time for him to retire. After his retirement, he continued to be good friends with the family who owned the business, and sometimes he would come back and visit at the plant just to check on how the company was doing. Always had the company in his heart. Now, shortly after the time the first man was hired, there was another young man who also came to work for the same company. In terms of attitude, habits, productivity, he wasn't anything at all like the first employee. He was smart, and he knew a lot of things, but he just wasn't the same when it came to hard work. In fact, sometimes he would come in a little late, leave early, and take extended breaks. Nobody really seemed to want to do anything about it, but after some time, he was leaving early on Friday to spend time at the beach or the mountains, and then after some time, he would even come in to work during the middle of the day on Monday after returning from his little mini vacation. Now, what was striking about this was that he, too, kept being trained to do more and more jobs just like the first man. The company promoted him from foreman to manager, and he, too, was running several departments just like the first man. He probably didn't make the company that much money like the first man did, but they sure did pay him as though he did. In fact, he ended up being the first man's boss. But hold on, there's more to it. If the company president would send everyone a memo about a new company policy, something that everybody would have to comply with, the first man would, as expected because he had the company's best interest at heart, notify the employees under him about it, and he would not only follow the instructions to a T, but he would also tell the other employees to do the same thing, whether he agreed with it or not. But the second man did things a lot different. If he didn't agree with something, he would march right into the president's office and ask for an explanation, sometimes even demanding from him understanding about what he didn't agree with. You know, he was told in those situations, not just the policy itself, but the entire rationale behind it. In fact, he could follow the president home if he wanted to and discuss it over the dinner table. Because while the first man was just an employee, the second man was the owner's son. You see the difference? The first man could only know the letter of the law. The second man would know the spirit of the law. He would know what the master does. When the first man was being trained, it was so that he would be a better employee. When the second man was being trained, 
It was to prepare him to take over the company. In a nutshell, that's the difference between being a servant and being a son. Now, of course, I'm not advocating laxness, laziness, bad attitude, or taking too much time off. I'm just pointing out that relationship or position makes all the difference in the world. Amen. Now, let's take a look at Galatians chapter 4. We're going to read the first seven verses, and we're going to go through this little by little. Praise God. Galatians 4, verse 1. Now I say that the heir, heir means son, that the son, as long as he's a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. In my story, the second man, the son, might look like any other employee at first, but he's really the owner in training. In our case, as sons of God, we are, according to verse 1, Lord of all. Did you catch that? Well, you might say, well, I thought Jesus was Lord. Yeah, he is Lord, but he's Lord through us, through you and I. If we don't exercise lordship, Jesus can't exercise lordship. We have to know who we are, and we have to exercise lordship on the earth. God created us for dominion. Now, of course, he created us for productivity, but he created us for dominion. Just go back and read that in Genesis chapter 1, particularly verses 26 through 28. He created us to be fruitful. That's our productivity. And he created us for dominion, to have dominion over the works of his hands. Amen. Verse 2, the son is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. That would be like the foreman or like the trainers. Verse 3, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, the world system. Verse 4, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And I've read through verse 5. Notice the fullness of times has already come. Jesus has already come. Amen. We're not waiting for it. It's already come. It's already done. That leads us to verse 6. And this is so key. You ought to underline this in your Bible. And because you are sons, because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Daddy, Father. Verse 7, wherefore you are no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Praise God. Now, I hope you can see that. You're not a servant, my friend. You are a son. And what that means is everything that belongs to the Father belongs to you too. You're an heir of God through Christ. And in Romans 8, 17, it says that we're not only heirs, but joint heirs with Christ. That means that whatever belongs to Jesus belongs also to us. Amen. It's important to understand that being a servant is old covenant. Being a son is new covenant. We have to stop right there with the teaching portion for today, but we're going to pick this up on tomorrow's broadcast. Also on tomorrow's broadcast, we're going to pray the prayer of faith for the sick. So if you or a loved one is in need of healing, be sure to tune in to the Friday broadcast. Now let me remind you once again about the Divine Healing Training Series This online teaching, containing 12 sessions of about an hour each, takes place on Friday at 12 noon Pacific Time. And to do so, join us with your computer or smartphone at zoom.com and use the meeting code 108-738-708. Again, go to zoom.com and use the meeting code 108 738-708. I'll also be simulcasting on Facebook Live. Now, it's not too early to reserve your space for the 7th Annual Celebration Benefit Dinner taking place on March 7th from 6 to 8 p.m. 
Now, even though we're serving you a fabulous meal, this event is free, but the spaces fill up fast, so I encourage you to reserve your space. It'll take place at the Rock Creek Country Club on the west side. Again, it's Saturday, March 7th from 6 to 8 p.m. It'll be a time where we fellowship together, worship the Lord, and share about what God is doing around the world. You don't want to miss that. Now listen to this, then I'll be right back. The Bible tells us we are no longer servants, but sons. Servanthood is based on what we do for God. Sonship is based on who we are. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. In his CD entitled, Sonship Realities, Craig DeMoe explains your identity in the firstborn son, Jesus. If you want to build confidence for your life in Christ, you'll want to get a copy of Sonship Realities. Right now, this CD is being offered to our listeners for a gift of any size to Ambassador Ministries. To request your copy of Sonship Realities, write to Ambassador Ministries, P.O. Box 19561, Portland, Oregon, 97280. Now, in case you're not aware, I began this program as a result of a direct word from the Lord back in the fall of 2007, and I began broadcasting in 2008. So I've been on the air now for 11 years broadcasting as God has instructed me. The Lord always gives provision for whatever He orders, but that doesn't mean it comes right away. And many times we have to wait on the Lord because God is aligning other people to be obedient to the heavenly vision. We like to think that free is a very good price, but in reality, as you know, my friend, nothing's free. Somebody pays the bill, and I suppose, like the Apostle Paul, I could say, like he said in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 8, that I robbed other churches so I could feed you. And many times that is what has taken place with this broadcast. Would you ask the Lord if He wants you to be a part of the ongoing support of this broadcast? If you would do so, then just do what He says. One of the great things about investing in the kingdom of God is that God will reward you just as if you had provided the resources for that investment in the first place. And he's the one that does it all. He wants us to partner with him. He wants us to work in partnership with one another. So let's just ask the Lord and be obedient to whatever he says to do. If he directs you to give, you'll want to make note of my contact information just ahead. Until we meet again by radio again tomorrow, let me exhort you, my friend, that you are God's ambassador. You're his representative on the earth. Bye for now. You've been listening to The Ambassador with Craig Demo. Your testimonies and prayer requests are very important to Craig. Please write Ambassador Ministries, P.O. Box 19561, Portland, Oregon, 97280. This ministry is sustained by the faithfulness of God through our partners and friends. To find out more about partnering with the Lord through this exciting ministry, contact Ambassador Ministries, P.O. Box 19561, Portland, Oregon, 97280. Our web address is ambassadorministries.us. That's ambassadorministries.us. May God richly bless you.